Hi guys, Tony here. Today I wanted to talk to you about aspartame and it being in the news because the WHO have reviewed their stance on it and causing cancer. Artificial sweetener used in thousands of products reportedly to be labeled possibly carcinogenic to humans. Another one that was in the news recently was erythritol, the natural sweetener, and it's saying it increased the risk of heart failure and just all-cause mortality. And even though it is naturally occurring, erythritol is only in minute quantities, and I think that's where the difference is, you know, when you get a huge amount of something that you wouldn't normally come into contact with in nature. Obviously, that's different with aspartame or sucralose. But yeah, over the years, I've had lots of people where they're just knocking back Cokes and then telling me, like, a regular Coke, going, well, you know, I avoid the diet stuff because it gives you cancer. And I'm like, well, sugar, does that not give you cancer too? Pretty much every condition there is, if you've got high blood sugar level, it makes it worse. So what is my stance on aspartame? Well, I think in moderation, a small amount, because you really, it's so hard to get away from these things. The EARC safety review was conducted to assess whether or not aspartame is a potential hazard. Based on all the published evidence, a person familiar with the matter told The Guardian. However, it does not take into account how much of a product a person can safely consume. So a small amount is it's not ideal, but in reality, it's nowhere near as bad as chugging through like liters and liters of dark Coke every day. Here's an example of someone who drank four liters of regular Coke every day. And yes, switching to dark Coke might have marginally increased her cancer risk, but she wouldn't have type 2 diabetes now. And that gets me on to sugar versus aspartame. Where do I stand on that? And it's a complicated matter because with sugar, it's so easy to go over your recommended daily allowance of it. And we all know the side effects of that. It's proven, it's known. Whereas with aspartame, it's a little bit more up in the air. If we're comparing Coke for a dark Coke, I would go for the dark Coke. When we're comparing, say, low calorie ice cream to a proper clotted cream, then you could argue both ways, especially it depends on the amount too. Because with ice cream, the more unnatural it is, there could be unnatural oils in it. So in that instance, I might lean towards actually having the higher calorie, although it has sugar in it, I would do things to make it more satiating. I would add frozen berries so you get really, you get more out of the ice cream. But one way to look at it in the healthy blood sugar range, the lower you are in that range, the longer you live. It's as simple as that. So any little thing you can do to get you down that range. And you've got to remember that people react differently to aspartame or sucralose. I know with sucralose, it's some people can actually kick you out of a fast. Your body can actually get an insulin spike from it, but everyone's different. And sucralose is another one that's been shown. There's some evidence of it causing DNA damage. You might have heard of sweeteners damaging the gut microbiome and increasing inflammation, but in fact, sugar does this also. It's all about moderation. Check out my company, Epic Genetics. We've now brought on the True Age Complete test. Not only is your pace of aging a good indicator of your health, but also your skin too. If you look at these 45 year olds where their face has been overlaid. So how can I put it? If you have a small amount of sugar in the most natural form you can, like brown sugar, you know, unrefined sugar, and a very small amount of sweetener, you just come into contact with it. If you do feel you've got like a sweet tooth that day, I might have a dark Coke on a weekend, I try to avoid it in a week, say, and then you have that dark Coke, but you're not having it all the time. And then more of a daily thing, I would have stevia, the natural sweetener. And there's actually some like actual health benefits shown with stevia. There's obviously some side effects too. But compared to some of these other things I've mentioned, they, they appear to be a lot less severe. Are there benefits to using stevia? Stevia is a non-nutritive sweetener. This means it has almost no calories. If you're trying to lose weight, this aspect may be appealing. However, to date, research is inconclusive. The impact of non-nutritive sweetener on an individual's health may depend on the amount that is consumed, as well as the time of day it's consumed. If you have diabetes, stevia may help keep your blood sugar levels in check. When you flood your body with too much glucose too quickly, what happens is what I call a glucose spike. The more spikes you have, the faster you die. One 2010 study trusted source of 19 healthy, lean participants and 12 obese participants found that stevia significantly lowered insulin and glucose levels. It also left study participants satisfied and full after eating, despite the lower calorie intake. However, one noted limitation in this study is that it took place in a laboratory setting, rather than in a real-life situation in a person's natural environment.
And according to a 2009 study, stevia leaf powder may help manage cholesterol. Study participants consumed 20 milliliters of stevia extract daily for one month. The study found stevia lowered total cholesterol, LDL, BAD, cholesterol, and triglycerides with no negative side effects. It also increased HDL, good, cholesterol. It's unclear if occasional stevia use in lower amounts would have the same impact. If you're early in your health journey, then make the switch from sugar. If you're further down it, then you want to kind of phase out artificial sweeteners as much as you can, i.e. switching to a natural sweetener and also lowering your sweet tooth. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.